Well, good morning, everyone. It's a beautiful day to be in the house of the Lord, but any day is a good day to be in the house of the Lord. So we welcome you to our service this morning, and we especially welcome those who are visiting with us by internet this morning. We trust that everyone will receive just a blessing from being with us this morning. A couple of announcements, or actually three or four announcements. The Easter Lily Fund has been approved. The cost is $10, and that will go to Roger Community, community that went to the Community Meal Fund, didn't it? Or Food Pantry. It either goes Community Meal or Food Pantry one. I have to look it up and make sure. Oh. <laughs> you want me to start over? <laughs> Committees will meet this coming Wednesday night. Uh, be sure and check with your chairman to see if y'all are meeting or not. I know the wor uh, Kelly, you said the worship committee is going to meet. Yeah, six o'clock Which everyone you call. Seven o'clock, I think, is what we put up for committee meetings. Okay. Okay. So every everybody's going to meet. So all committees will meet Wednesday night at 7. Uh, and also, we need to make sure that you get the word to K if you have a graduate from any school, kindergarten all through college, uh, get the information to K just as quickly as possible. And then I'm sure most of you probably know by now that Sandy Green has resigned as our church secretary. And uh, the only reason she would give me to, for her resigning is that she has something that she has to do. So other than that, uh, it has, hasn't been, she have, won't say what it is, so. Any other announcements that we need to make? Did you say committee six or seven? Seven, right Kelly? It doesn't matter, it's six, we'll be fine with that. All right, let's have the committees meet at six. Is that okay, Robin? All right, committees will meet Wednesday night at six. Any other announcements? Let's prepare our hearts to worship the Lord. Would you please stand for our call to worship, which comes from Psalm 119, verse 121 through 128. I have done what is righteous and just. Do not leave me to my oppressors. Ensure your servant's well-being. Do not let the arrogant oppress me. My eyes fail looking for your salvation, looking for your righteous promise. Deal with your servant according to your love and teach me your degrees. I am your servant. Give me discernment that I may understand your statutes. It is time for you to act, Lord. Your law is being broken because I love your commands more than gold, more than pure gold. And because I consider all your precepts right, I hate every wrong path. Let us pray. Lord God Almighty, it is such a wonderful privilege just to be able to come into your house and worship you. Regardless of what the weather is outside, Lord, we are so thankful that we are blessed to be able to come into your house 
and to be able to lift up our prayers to you, to lift up our songs to you, and speak your holy word. So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you, Lord, for all Christian churches as they gather around the face of the world this morning. We ask your blessing upon the worshipers and upon those ministers who proclaim the gospel. Father, we pray that you will bless them, that you will endow them with your Holy Spirit, that they may be able to speak truth and speak the words that you've given to them to speak, and they may come directly from you. So, Father, as we worship you today, may we glorify you, and may your, may your presence just be among us this morning. And, Father, now help us to pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Let us now worship in song as we worship in praise. Here I am to worship. You're my God, you're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. Amen. All right, our next hymn. It's going to be number 146. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. We'll sing it through two times. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. 
I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on his face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Amen. You may be seated. Let us continue in worship now as we present the Lord with our tithes and offerings. So let us give generously to the Lord. God from whom all blessings flow, praise Him all creatures here below, praise Him above ye heavenly hosts, praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, You may be seated. <clears throat> I have an Old Testament reading this morning from Exodus chapter 20. It's probably a very familiar passage of scripture to you. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. You shall have no God, other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or in the earth beneath or the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generations of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son, or daughter, nor your male or female servant, nor your animals, nor any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, but he rested on the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy." Honor your father and mother, so that you may live long in the land the Lord God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, his ox or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Now I'm going to add just a couple here that's not a 
When the people saw the thunder and lightning and heard the trumpet and saw the mountain and smoke, they trembled with fear. They stayed at a distance and said to Moses, Speak to us yourself and we will listen, but do not have God speak to us or we will die. And Moses said to the people, Do not be afraid. God has come to test you so that the fear of God will be with you to keep you from sinning. The people remained at a distance while Moses approached the thick darkness where God was. May God add his blessing to the reading of his holy word. We're going to do the prayers of the people. Do you have prayer requests or praise you'd like to lift up? And I will tell you, Teresa Moore is in room 711 at St. Thomas Rutherford. And I was hoping to hear back from JB. I talked to JB this morning early, and she's undergoing a test. And so I was hoping to hear something back, but I haven't heard anything. So just keep that. Keep Teresa and JB in your pants. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For Francis Pennington. Others? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And uh, yes. 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 Yeah, she's been very faithful. And Thursday will be her last day. The tw- yeah, the 12th. Uh, prayers for Natalie. She travels. She had one of those urges that great grandmothers have, and she had to go uh, get that ur- ur- that get that urge satisfied by going to Beaufort, South Carolina this weekend. So she's on her way back from down there. So praises for that. Uh, praise that I got my second COVID shot Tuesday, and so I had no reaction whatsoever from it. In fact, Tuesday night, I was wondering if he actually gave me a shot. But then Wednesday, I got sore, so <laughs> so I knew at least at least he stuck the needle in. Anything else? Yes. <clears throat> Anything else? Yes. Let us go to the Lord then in a few moments of silent prayer. Almighty God, how thankful we are for the blessings you share upon us and for their answered prayers. For so many times you answer our prayers. And Father, we realize that you always answer them. And sometimes we just don't like the answer you give us. But we still, Lord, surrender to you. We surrender our lives to you. We love you. And Father, we just want to praise you and thank you. And we know, Lord, that as we go through this world, that we go through trials and tribulations, and we go through times of joy, and you're there for each and everything that we go through. So we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for this world that you have created, for the universe, Lord, for the unexplored parts of the universe. We thank you for all those. That you have created this earth in a beautiful fashion, and you have created us in your image. So Father, as we pray this morning, 
We ask for your presence in each of our lives. May we each feel the power of your Holy Spirit working in our lives, guiding us, giving us the wisdom, giving us the know-how to come to you and pray. And Father, this morning, you've heard all these prayer requests lifted up. You've heard the praises. You've heard the prayer requests. Lord, we ask a special blessing upon each one of those. For those, Lord, who are in failing health, we just ask that you would just bring peace into their life. May you comfort them. May you give them, Lord, this time that they have just to draw closer to you. And Father, for those who are in hospitals and undergoing tests, for those who are experiencing COVID, Father, we ask your blessing upon them that they may just uh, be comforted, just knowing that you've got your loving arms around them, that you've given the wisdom to the doctors to know how to treat them, to do the things, Lord, that will help them to get well. So, Father, we pray your blessing upon them, and may your healing touch just be upon any of those. Father, we thank you for the safety that you give to us, the security, when you protect us, and we're involved in things that sometimes we have, through no fault of our own, that we're in accidents, but you just put your loving arms out, and you hold us close to you, and you keep us, Lord, from being hurt. So, Father, we thank you for the country that we live in. We thank you for the leadership. We ask your blessing upon them. And Father, may you guide us in all the things that we do each and every day of our life. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's continue to sing this morning. Our next hymn is going to be number 347, No One Ever Cared for Me Like Jesus. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus Since I found in Him a friend so strong and true I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much he cared for me. All my life was full of sin when Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. No one ever cared for me like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as He. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Oh, how much He cared for me. Every day He comes to me with new assurance. More and more I understand His words of love. But I'll never know just why He came to save me Till someday I see His blessed face above No one ever cared for me like Jesus There's no other friend so kind as He No one else could take the sin and darkness from me Oh, how much He cared for me. All right, and the next hymn is number 301, At the Cross. Alas, and did my Savior bleed, and did my Sovereign I would he devote that sacred hand for sinners such as I at the cross at the cross where I first saw the light 
And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day Was it for crimes that I have done He groaned upon the tree Amazing pity, grace unknown And love beyond degree At the cross, at the cross Where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day well might the sun in darkness hide and shut his glories in when christ the mighty maker died for man the creature sin at the cross at the cross where i first saw the light and the burden of my heart rolled away it was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day But drops of grief can ne'er repay The debt of love I owe Dear Lord, I give myself away It's all that I can do at the cross, at the cross, where I first saw the light And the burden of my heart rolled away It was there by faith I received my sight And now I am happy all the day Our summary scripture this morning comes from Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 21. As you have heard that it was said to the people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with another, with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. And if anyone who says, you fool, will be in danger of the fire of hell. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and be reconciled to them, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still together on the way or your adversary may hand you over to the judge and the judge may hand you over to the officer and you, will be, and you may be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will not get out until you have paid the last penny. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for your word. And now, Father, may our hearts be opened. May our ears hear what you have to say. And Father, I ask your blessing upon these words that I speak this morning. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I was thinking this morning driving down here, I really haven't emphasized Lent very much. And normally, I would do a series of sermons during Lent leading up to Easter. But this year, we got into the Sermon on the Mount. <clears throat> and although these are not typical Lenten sermons, I think it is important for us to know how we are to react as disciples. And I think these scriptures point out things that either we are not doing or things that we should be doing. And so a lot of it is self-evaluation, which is basically what we do in Lent, is we evaluate ourselves and we prepare ourselves for the resurrection. Well, the Sermon on the Mount is certainly preparing us for the resurrection. It is preparing us for the resurrection of us to go to heaven someday. So as we go through these, and I think that it, and Jesus in this teaching is, is extremely difficult. 
But Jesus teaches with an authority that no one else can have. You know, when the rabbis or when the scribes or the Pharisees, or the, the, when they taught, I'll give them credit for this because I, I, I really, I probably abused them a little too much for the way they acted. But to give them credit, they never took credit for any of the laws. They revered the law. They took what God said in Exodus and tried their absolute best to expand that to figure out how to live within the law. And, you know, and, and the Pharisees prided themselves on living within the law. So Jesus, when he, and so when Jesus teaches, and one other thing about the Pharisees, when, when they had a service in the synagogue, they took the scrolls of the law down and they walked all around through the synagogue so that people could revere the law and those scrolls just like they did. But when Jesus began to teach, when Jesus began to preach, remember back when he, when he preached in Nazareth, remember he read the scripture and then he said, today this scripture is fulfilled. They didn't particularly like the way he taught, but he taught with the authority that none of the rabbis had the authority to speak. And so when Jesus begins in, and in last week, you remember Jesus said he did not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill the law. And then at the end of that, but your righteousness must exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees. So when now when we get into this, and for about the next oh, two or three weeks, we're going to be looking at the righteousness that Christ has within us. Because the only way that our righteousness can, can exceed the righteousness of the Pharisees, and the Pharisees did everything they could do to obey the law. We have to have Christ living within us. So with Christ living within us, we have his righteousness so with his righteousness living within us, then how are we to live? So, part, so Jesus is beginning, and, and he takes these laws, and where he says, you have heard that it was said, but then in the next line he says, but I tell you. He's not destroying the law, but he's expanding on it. And when he says, you have heard that it was said to people long ago, you shall not murder, and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. The Pharisees took that to mean, well, as long as I don't commit murder, as long as I don't kill somebody, then I'm okay. And now, if we read, if you have the King James Version, when you read that commandment, you shall not commit murder, I think it will say, you shall not kill. Now, there is a difference between murder and killing. And we went over this one Sunday night in, in our Bible study. You can kill somebody and it's not your fault. You can have an accident and kill somebody, and it's not your fault. You cannot commit a murder without it being your fault. That's the difference in the two. The person still loses their life, but in one case, it was an accident on your part. The other case, it was premeditation on your part. So you committed this murder, why? Well, Jesus says, anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. How many of us, and I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands, how many of us can say that we have never been angry? I see some snickers. But I don't see anybody raising their hand saying, oh yeah, that's me. I've never been angry. You know, I assure you that as a human being, angry, anger is one of those emotions that is most difficult for us to hold that control. We had a fellow in the church in Smithville years ago. This is back before I was in the ministry. That man could get under my skin worse than anybody I think I ever met. 
And we had some pretty good arguments. And the longer we argued, the louder we would get. And I went home one day and Natalie said, you just need to avoid him. And I thought, no, I don't need to avoid him. I need to go apologize to him. Sometimes when we get angry, we lose control of our thought process. Our thought process becomes all about me. Husbands and wives, I'll bet you that every time you've had an argument, it was probably all about me as an individual. Not about, you didn't argue about me, you argued about each other, but, but it was all about an individual, what we wanted. We get mad. And we do things that we would not ordinarily do because we lose control. We simply lose control of our lives. We lose control of our little minds. And Jesus says that anyone who is angry with a brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Now, I can get mad, or you can get mad, and sometimes you'll get mad and nobody else will know it. But you know it. So how can, you be, how can you be angry and be subject to the judgment of God? Because he knows that you're angry. But sometimes that anger spills over. And, and in the next verse he says, And anyone who says to a brother or sister, Raka, is answerable to the court. Well, Raka, Raka does not translate into a word. But Raka translates into A contempt for that person. Have you ever called anyone an idiot? Have you ever called anybody a bonehead? Have you ever called anyone stupid? Have you ever thought to yourself, how much of an idiot can you be? You just committed to sin. Because that's exactly what Jesus is talking about. What we're saying to a person when we say you're an idiot or you're stupid, we're saying you don't have any brain power. You don't have any thought process to control you. God does not create anyone like that. He gives, a, he gives everyone the ability to think. So we can't tear them down. We can't show contempt to them and think that, well, we're better than they are because they're stupid or they're a bonehead, or they're an idiot. And I know that probably, all, I would say probably almost all of us have done that at one time or another. Why don't we do it? Out of anger. It all goes back to anger. And then, and then he says, and he says the next one, he says, and anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Well, let me go back to that rocket just a minute. It's out to court. And, and the court that he's talking about is the court of the Sanhedrin. But how can you judge somebody and convict somebody of their anger? For that's an emotion. You can't. No court can. But a judge can. But God can. Because no, God knows what our thoughts are. And then he says, And anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fire of hell. Greek in that is moron. Have you ever told anybody a fool? Well, the psalmist said that fools deny the existence of God. So if, if we deny the existence of God, then we have no morality. And, and to call somebody a fool, fool is to show an ultimate content, a contempt for their morality or absence of it. Anybody call it, ever called anybody a fool? And if you do, 
If you have called somebody a fool, then you're in danger of the fire of hell. Now that hell translates Gehenna. Gehenna is a, va is, 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 is a valley of Hinnon. It's a real place, a little bit southwest of Jerusalem. King Ahaz got the Israelites into worshiping a god named Molech. Molech asked the people to bring their children and sacrifice them in the fire. Josiah, another king, the king after Ahaz, reformed Israel and he said, This valley will no longer be good for anything but refuse. You know what they do with it? They begin to take their garbage out there and all the refuge and they begin to burn it in this valley. And so it is a constant fire and evil smoke hanging over it like a portrayal of what hell is like. Now, most of us look at this and say, wow, that's, how can I not do, how can I not sin? How can I not do these things? The answer is, we probably can't. And when we realize that, then we realize that we need Jesus. If God is going to try us in a court of law for our sins, which we're all going to face God for the judgment of our sins, I would think we would really want Jesus beside us. We would really want Him there with us to say to God, He's mine or she's mine. Because faith in Jesus Christ gets us through this. Now that does not give us a license to go out and call everybody we want to a fool or an idiot or whoever you want to do it and just say, well, I can do it because I got Jesus with me. No, that don't work. Because we have the power of the Holy Spirit living within us which tells us and teaches us, you don't do that. And he goes on, he gives two more examples. And, and, and in these two examples, there's two different examples. Therefore, if you're offering your gift at the altar, and never remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there in front of the altar. First go and reconcile to them, and then come and offer your gift. So let's translate this into modern day 2021. If you're in worship, and you remember that you got a problem with somebody out there, get up out of worship, go fix that problem, and then come back and worship God. Because as long as we have that problem, it interferes with our worship of God. God wants true worship. We can't worship Him like that. When, we're, when we got something up on our heart that we know that something is wrong, we need to get it corrected. The next example it gives is settle matters quickly with your adversary who is taking you to court. So this is, this is your enemy. This is your enemy that you owe money to. And your enemy is taking you to court. And he's going to place you in front of a judge. Jesus is saying, don't let it get that far. Work it out. Make some kind of arrangement between you and this person. So what is Jesus saying to us through this? He says it's important to have a relationship between us and God the Father it is equally important to have a relationship with these people around us. See, we're going to go to heaven someday, and we need to be able to get along with people up there. If we can't get along with people down here, how are we going to get along with people up there? See, you and I need to work out relationship. God wants us to have a good relationship with each other. Paul said, if possible, have peace with everyone. Have peace with everyone. Do you realize what kind of life it can be? How joyous it can be? How fulfilling it can be? If we don't have adversaries out here, that we don't have problems with people that we worry about? 
Is it tough to do? Absolutely. I've had enough of those adversaries in my life to realize, yeah, it is tough to do. I had a, had a guy one time that, that I really felt like that he, my son was on his baseball team. And I really felt like that he took out his relationship with me and him on my son. I don't mind people taking out something on me. But don't take it out on my son. But you know, that bothered me for years. And the only way to resolve it is to go to him and talk to him. And apologize for me having these bad feelings toward him because of something he did to my son. And I bet each one of us would do the same thing. We don't want somebody taking out something on our children that it should be on us. What Jesus is talking here about how, how we live with people. And if we live peaceably with people, then we can have a relationship with the Holy Father. But you see what that does? And I, I think I've used this illustration before. This horizontal relationship with God, a, a vertical relationship with God, and a horizontal relationship with people, you wind up with a cross. That's what that cross right there is all about. It's a vertical relationship with God the Father and a horizontal relationship with the people. And the only way we can do it is through the man that died on that cross. Faith in Jesus Christ enables you and I to have a relationship with the Father and with the people around us. Do we have to work at it? comes by faith but we have to work we sometimes we have to respond and actually do things rather than just say well God will take care of all that sometimes you and I actually have to take action and do things but Jesus was willing to go to the cross so that you and I can live at peace in just a few moments, we're going to celebrate the service of Holy Communion. We can celebrate it because of Jesus, because God sent him here to die for you and I. That blood that he shed was a sacrifice for our sins. If you've never accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life, now I invite you to do so. You can get up out of your pew right now and come and accept Jesus Christ, Lord, without any music, without anything at all. Just walk down here and accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for the word that you give to us. We thank you for the service of Holy Communion. Lord, it is you who gave us Jesus. It is you who have provided the sacrifice that we needed. The sacrifice for our sins. So that our faith in Jesus would wipe away our sins. And Father, this morning, as we celebrate with the service of Holy Communion, we ask your blessing upon the bread, upon the juice, we ask you, Lord, to turn these elements into what you would have them to be, as they represent the body of Christ and the blood of Christ. And Father, create with us a clean heart that we may truly be able to worship you in this service. And Father, we praise you and we thank you because you have told us that Jesus is coming again. So even as we celebrate his death and remember his death, when we celebrate his resurrection, we look even more to that time when Jesus is coming again. 
So, Father, we thank you. We ask your blessing upon this service, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. But if you would, if you'll come up and take one out or take one for the family, would you come now and pick up your communion cups? On the night when Jesus betrayed, he took bread and he blessed it and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples. He said, this is my body. Eat this in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made for his body that he was willing to give was a sacrifice for you and I. He was willing to go to the cross, to willing to endure the beatings, to endure the humiliation, humiliation, to endure the suffering that he did there for us. So Father, we thank you for Jesus, and we thank you for his willingness to do your will. For it's in Christ's name we pray, amen. The body of Christ, take and eat. And in like manner, he took the cup and he blessed it. He divided among his disciples. He said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness and remission of your sins. All through the Old Testament, there was never a sacrifice for sins made that did not include blood. But Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. His blood running down the cross is a sacrifice for all of our sins. The, body, the blood of Christ, take and drink. And after the meal, they sang a hymn, and they went out to Mount of Olives. And the hymn we're going to sing is number 414, Have Thine Own Way, Lord. Would you please stand as we sing together? Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Thou art the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me after thy will, while I Have 
thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Search me and try me, Master, today. Whiter than snow, Lord, wash me just now, as in thy presence humbly I bow. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way, wounded and weak. Help me, I pray. Power, all power, surely is thine. Touch me and heal me, Savior divine. Have thine own way, Lord, have thine own way. Hold o'er my being absolute sway. Fill with thy spirit till all shall see. Christ only always living in me. PM. And last week, we actually helped the Israelites build the tabernacle. So we're kind of moving on. We're kind of moving through Exodus. So uh, I, think it's pretty, I think it's pretty exciting because, you know, we've said a lot about the law on Sunday night and what it meant and how it worked for us. So uh, I invite you to come at 6 p.m. We sing a little bit, and then we do Bible study, and we're usually out by 7 p.m. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for the day that you've given to us. We thank you, Lord, for this worship service. And we pray now, Lord, that as we go out, that we will carry the light of Christ with us, that we will be Christ's disciples in this dark and broken world, that we may lead others to Christ because of our lives. It's Christ living in us, Lord, that makes a difference. And it's in his name that we pray. Amen.